Hello everyone and welcome to this week's Lightweight Java Game Library 3D Game Tutorial and this week we're going to be adding some more features to the Skybox such as allowing it to fade between different textures, making it rotate and also fixing the fog problem that I mentioned last time. Before I start though I just want to very quickly talk about the schedule for the tutorials because recently I've been getting a load of questions and requests. As I'm sure you know, I'm currently working full time on the MMO game that I'm programming and I'm also preparing for a Kickstarter campaign that's coming up later this year, so it's very hard to find time to take two days out of my schedule every two weeks in order to create a tutorial. I still intend to keep making tutorials every two weeks and the more complex topics will come eventually, uh, but sometimes I simply don't have time and I have to do a shorter, more basic tutorial like the one this week. If you have a look in the description you can see what the remaining topics in this series are going to be and you'll also notice that I do plan to do some other series after this one which will cover some more complex gameplay related features such as collision detection and multiplayer. And I know that a lot of you would rather see those more complex topics sooner uh, and I'm really sorry that it might be a while before I get to them but there just simply aren't enough hours in the week for me to find time to cover such large topics like them right now. But that's the bad news out of the way, so let's get back into our game engine. Last week we ended with this fog problem where the fog was no longer working very well. The way that we simulate fog is of course to fade objects into the colour of the fog the further away they are from the camera. But since we added the skybox, the distant objects are still very visible because the fog colour is contrasting to the colourful skybox. To fix this we're going to fade the lower section of the skybox into the colour of the fog so that the distant objects once again have a plain colour background to merge into. We're going to define two heights on the skybox, a lower limit and an upper limit. Above the upper limit height, the skybox will just use the colour of the skybox texture, and below the height of the lower limit, the skybox will be completely the colour of the fog. Between the two limits, the colour will fade linearly between the fog colour and the skybox colour. So let's start off in the skybox fragment shader and we're going to set up those two limits. So I'm going to set the lower limit to 0 which is right in the centre of the skybox and I'm going to set the upper limit to 30 which is slightly above the horizon. We also now need to know the colour of the fog so I'm going to bring that in via a uniform variable, a vec3 variable. Uh, down here I'm just going to change this from out colour to a vec4 variable called final colour because we're going to use it again in a calculation in a second. And now we're going to calculate a float value called factor which represents the visibility of this fragment of the skybox where a factor of 0 would mean that this fragment is below the lower limit and should just be the fog colour and a factor of 1 would mean that this fragment is above the upper limit meaning that it should just use the skybox texture colour. And notice how we can use the Y texture coordinate as the height of the fragment here, because if you remember from last week, the texture coordinates are the same as the fragment position. Finally, we clamp the value of factor to between 0 and 1, because anything outside that range doesn't really matter to us. We're now going to use that factor to mix the two colours together, the fog colour and the colour of the skybox texture. So we're going to mix the fog colour, which we need to set to a 4D vector. We're going to mix it with the final colour, which we got from the texture of the skybox. And we're going to use the factor variable to mix them together to decide how much of each colour should be rendered. So in the skybox shader, we have to do our usual stuff. So create an int for the fog colour uh, uniform location. Then we're going to get the location of that fog colour uniform, um, so get uniform location fog colour and then we need to have a method to load up a colour to that uniform. So this is going to take in an R, G and a B value and we just have to call load vector. We're going to load it up to the location of the fog colour uniform and we're just going to put these RGB values into a vector so that we can load them up. So new vector 3f RGB. So let's now go into the skybox renderer where we actually need to load up the color. So the render method now needs to take in the color of the fog. So this is going to take in three floats R, G and B and I've got a comma there. Um, and then we're just going to load that straight up to the shader after starting the shader. So load fog color and put in the RGB and then in the master renderer 
we actually need to give the skybox renderer these colors so we have the color of the fog in the red green and blue variables and that should now work and if I go ahead and run that you can see that near the horizon the skybox fades into the fog color so that the distant objects can fade into the fog once again. The next thing that we're going to do is to simulate the clouds moving by slowly rotating the skybox around the y-axis. To do this we could create a transformation matrix with a y rotation and apply it to each vertex in the vertex shader but seeing as the vertices are already going to be transformed by the view matrix we can just add this extra Y rotation into the view matrix itself. So we're going to do this rotating in the Skybox shader class. So the first thing we're going to do is to decide what the rotation speed is going to be. And I'm just going to set that to one degrees per second at the moment. And then we're going to create a float for the current rotation of the Skybox. So now in the load view matrix method, we're going to increase the rotation of the Skybox by the rotation speed per second multiplied by the number of seconds uh, which we can get by doing display manager dot get frame time seconds and then we're going to apply this rotation to the view matrix by using the rotate method uh, the rotation needs to be in radians so we'll quickly convert the rotation to radians the axis has to be the y-axis of course uh, so that's zero one zero and the matrix that we want to rotate is the view matrix which is called matrix and we want to store the results in the view matrix which is called matrix and we need to cast the first argument to a float and if we run that that should already work and as you can see it now looks like the clouds are moving across the sky the final thing that we're going to do is to allow the skybox to fade between different textures which will allow us to use different sky textures for different times of the day meaning that we can implement some sort of day night cycle so in the skybox fragment shader we now need two sampler cubes because we're going to be sampling two textures and then fading them together so create a second one called cube map 2 and we also need a float value called blend factor which is going to tell us how much of each texture to render where a blend factor of 0 would be just the first texture and a blend factor of 1 would be just the second texture. Then we're going to sample both of the textures and store the results into these two VEC4s called texture 1 and texture 2. Uh, and then we're going to set the final color to a mixture of texture 1 and texture 2 and we're going to mix them using that blend factor uniform variable. So that will mix the two textures together to give us a final blended skybox. Uh, so now in the skybox shader we're just going to zoom through the usual stuff. I've actually sped this footage up quite a lot because you all know how to do this by now. We need a location for each of those three uniform variables. Then we need to get the location of each of those three uniform variables and let's be very careful to spell the uniform names correctly here to avoid any problems so get the location of the blend factor uniform then get the location of the cube map uniform and then you also need to get the location of the cube map 2 uniform uh, so do that then we need to have a method to load up the blend factor that's going to be really simple it's just going to load up a float to the blend factor uniform so that takes in a float and it loads it up to the blend factor location but for the two cube maps it's a bit different if you remember from the multi texturing tutorial we have to load up an int to each of those samplers to tell each sampler which texture unit to look in uh, when it's sampling the texture so we're going to tell the cube map texture sampler to sample from texture unit 0 and the cube map 2 texture sampler to sample from texture unit 1. So we now need some more skybox textures to use and I've got these night sky textures here that I'm going to be using and you can download these images from the description of this video and then don't forget to put them into your res folder. So in the skybox renderer we need another string array with all the names of those night texture files and don't forget to keep them in that same order right left top bottom back and then front then we also need another int for the night texture id and then we can load up the night skybox the cube map texture uh, by calling the loader.load method and putting in 
those night texture file names. Then we need to call the shader.connect texture units method to tell those samplers in the shader which uh, texture units they need to be sampling. And then down here at the bottom, we're going to create a new method which is going to bind the textures. So it's going to bind two textures, one to texture unit zero, one to texture unit one. And then it's also going to load up the blend factor. So first I'm going to active, activate texture unit zero and to texture unit zero, I'm going to bind the daytime cube map texture. So the type of texture is GL texture cube map. And the texture that I'm going to put in here is called texture, which is the daytime texture. And then we're going to do the same for the nighttime texture, but we're going to bind it to texture unit one. So make sure you change that and also put in the night texture here. Finally, we just have to load up a blend factor to the shader. And for now, I'm just going to load up a value of 0.5 so that the skybox shows an equal mix of the day and night textures. Then we just have to replace these two lines where we used to bind the texture in the render method with the bind textures method call. And then we can go ahead and run that and hopefully that should work. And if you look at the sky, you can see that it is indeed an equal mix of the day and night skyboxes. So now that we've done that, we can very easily implement a day night cycle. Let's add some sense of time here. So create a new float variable called time up at the top here. And then you can create some time based system that decides which skybox textures to show and how much to blend them depending on the time of day. So I'm going to replace the bind textures method with this method that I wrote earlier, which is just a very simple day night system. You can download this code from the description if you want, but I would definitely recommend that you design your own system because this isn't a very nice way of doing it. Uh, but I just wanted to give you a quick example of the sort of thing that you can do. As you can see, all that's going on here is that I increase the time each frame and then if it's greater than 24,000, it starts again at zero. Uh, and then depending on what time it is, I choose the two textures, calculate how much of each texture should be shown and then bind the textures and load the blend value. And if I go ahead and run that, you'll be able to see that after a while, the night sky fades into a daytime sky. So there's loads of stuff that you can play around with here. You could use loads of different skybox textures for different times of the day. You might want to change the fog color depending on the time of day, or you could even add some randomness into it somehow so that every day is slightly different. But that is going to be it for this week. Next time we're going to be covering one of those remaining topics in the schedule. Uh, I'm not sure which topic it's going to be yet, it really depends on how much time I can put towards it, but hopefully it will be something interesting. Sorry again for not being able to do a more exciting topic this week. I really wish I had more time to spend on the tutorials, but that is unfortunately not the case. Don't forget to check out yesterday's devlog video about the new combat GUIs. Link is on the screen now. But yeah, thank you guys very much for watching this video. Do subscribe if you haven't already. Have a wonderful week and I will see you all next time.